This is the 2021 Isuzu MUX. It's at the end of its life cycle, all done and dusted, and the new MUX is on its way. So I've got it here to let you know whether you should go out and find one before the new one arrives, or if you should just simply wait. This is Product Review Cars. My name's Cameron. Let's get into it. Up front, we have an aggressive looking front end, and it's far more aggressive than the new one coming out. And I just particularly like this front end, except it's got a lot of chrome. So it looks like a wrapper from New York. It's aggressive, but it's got a nice big, bright chrome grill. We have Isuzu spelt out on front, which I like a lot. And we have some aggressive by LED headlamps and some fog lamps down below. On the side, we have 18 inch alloy wheels, which are dual tone and all four of them house disc brakes. These are wrapped in a hybrid off-road tire and these wheels are standard on this middle of the range trim on the MUX. And like I said, if you like chrome, you'll like the MUX. You've got chrome up here on the side mirrors and you've got chrome on the door handles. These mirrors can electronically fold in, but do not automatically fold in. So you can do that from the inside when you park in a tight alleyway, but you can't lock it from your key. We have some side steps built into the side of the MUX, which allows you to get up onto the roof or for shorter people to get inside this car. And we have Isuzu's famous Katana line here, which I'll leave it up to you if you think that looks like a Katana. I think the new one looks far more like a Katana where this just seems like trying to not make the side of the car look too boring. Here we have the classic side profile of the Aussie 4x4 seven seater. These are built off a ute chassis or for those Americans watching a truck chassis. And then this is just basically designed to have a ute that can go off road, but without the compromises of a ute, like having an exposed tray or a separate luggage compartment. You can also carry seven people in cars like this. Around back, it's very basic, but the main reason why you'd be considering one of these over a ute is because of this rear short overhang, as well as this enclosed boot. When you're going off road, this is a lot better than the ute variants. You have some simple badging. You have a shotgun looking exhaust, which is very real. And then you also have the tow ball here. This thing can tow to three ton brake, but the only issue is, is that you're only gonna be able to put about 300 kilos on the ball weight, which may mean packaging a caravan or camper trailer just might be that little bit more awkward to make sure that you're not overloading that ball weight of the tow bar. The rear tailgate of the MUX is manual in its operation. So that could be a little bit annoying if you have kids that have a tendency to not be able to reach the tailgate or just forget to close it. In here, we have a minimum of 235 litres of boot space. Fold all the seats down, and we have a maximum boot space of 1,830 litres. Now, against the likes of a Kia Sorento, that's a little bit less, where the Kia Sorento has just over 2,000 litres of capacity. Now, this MUX came with a little storage box, which immediately adds a little lip when you want to put anything in and out of this, which I found a little bit odd in terms of its packaging, but I really appreciate its storage capacity to put dirty items away or use this as something like a tackle box or even put away dirty shoes for when you're going away. And it is removable, that's for sure. Unfortunately, it was the interior of this MUX which really let me down. There's a lot of stuff missing from here that in the new D-Max being sold in 2021 and late 2020 had, and we've had to wait nearly a year to get news that the update of the MUX is coming, which is very relieving for someone who might want all the creature comforts that the new Ute offers in terms of safety, infotainment and luxury features. But that's what this car is missing out on. And so that left me thinking, a four wheel drive enthusiast, what are you happy to leave out of the cabin for the sake of a very good off-road performer. This center screen here is the biggest letdown because it is just so old. There's no Apple CarPlay Android Auto. There's simple Bluetooth. There is a relatively easy to use and tunable audio system in here. So at least sound sounds decent coming out of this system, but it was just such a letdown to interact with as well. The touchscreen is not so bad. It's these physical buttons up top where there's a button that says map and you press that to go to map because this has inbuilt satellite navigation. You'll need to use that because you can't use your phone connected to this screen unless you want to mount it somewhere, which I think for the asking price to immediately jump into a car and mount your phone because it doesn't have a good enough infotainment system, that's not good enough for 2021. And that leads me to pressing this map button, which actually 
doesn't press down, it doesn't take you to map, even though it says it, and even though this car has it inbuilt. Using these audio buttons here was just extremely frustrating. They're so tacky to use, and they're just not good enough in terms of trying to adjust your volume up and down quick enough. I usually found myself using the volume control on the steering wheel because I hated interacting with these. And look, a CD player. I'm not against that. I think that's great. The car we had before this, the Lexus had that. I don't mind that at all, but it is just funny to see, and it really comments on the age of this interior. I like the climate controls, but it does feel like they spent a majority of the time focusing on this to make this the easiest thing to interact with as everything else felt secondary, which I guess I can appreciate. Below that we have an HDMI port for porting audio through as that's an audio option for when you're sourcing your media. We've also got two USB connections in here and an auxiliary cord. All of that I appreciate. Plenty of connectivity in this car, that is for sure. Take for example the storage in here as well. There's storage up on the dashboard which I found this to be a little bit finicky to open but that's nice to put something up there. There's also storage above the glove box which also has an 120 watt socket in there which is cool to charge items and store them away. There's also a decently sized glove box, but also hidden cup holders in the dash, which I like to keep the visual clutter away. Giant old school shifter, no complaints with how that works, but then it's just funny when you want to plug your phone in to charge it, for example, you don't really have a place to put your phone unless it's sliding around the cup holders here because this little slot underneath the climate controls is just a little limited. We have some drive mode options here for when we go off-roading and manual handbrake, and in front of me, possibly some of the most basic gauges you can buy on a car at this price point. It doesn't have a digital speedometer and it's really just for reading out very basic trip information and all the vitals of the car. That's it. And look, if you're happy with an instrument cluster that's just gonna get the job done, that's what this does. There's no automatic front headlamps. There's no automatic wipers. It's just a little basic for the asking price. Now, back seats of the MUX is why you're looking at this for people that you might be carting around or for kids, especially. The doors are nice and big to get in and out of and they're no problem, but they're better than that on a dual cab ute. You have more feet space in here, you have more knee room and I have plenty of headroom because this isn't making concessions for a rear tray. I love sitting in the back here. You can recline and bring these seats upright. It is very comfortable back here. These cloth seats are very comfortable and they're firm, but they're not too harsh. So I just think it's gonna be a great place to sit for longer journeys if you really had to. You can see the live surround sound speakers on the roof back here, which just help spread the noise around the cabin just a little bit more, but they're more for the front drivers, but at least in the back, you have some additional speakers as well as the one on the doors. You have a single USB port back here, which means kids might be fighting for that. There is a center armrest with a couple of cup holders in here, very comfortable. And it's just an easy place to get comfortable and relax back here. It's a bit better than it was in the back of the Kia Sorento, but I am very limited for legroom. I have to make the person in front of me sit a lot more upright than they'd probably like for me to get any sort of knee room that feels very comfortable for a trip longer than a couple of minutes. I have some basic amenities back here, like some cup holders or some grab handles just in case things get a bit crazy when we're going off road. But overall, this is for small children and they will be comfortable back here but for adults, I wouldn't recommend it. Now let's talk price. The MUX range starts off at just over $48,000 and that's just for the base model rear wheel drive MUX. If you want this model, which is the middle of the range LSU 4x4 model, you're gonna expect to pay $58,302 drive away. The MUX comes with a six year, 150,000 kilometer warranty. And it also covers cap price servicing up to seven years. So that means if you buy one that's a couple of months or a couple of years old, you at least have that peace of mind that you have that coverage for that long of a period of time. In terms of how much this costs, to fill up. This has got a 65 liter fuel tank. It carries diesel. And so that means from empty, you can expect to pay up to $90 a tank when filling up the MUX. Now we have 130 kilowatts in here and 430 newton meters of torque coming from a three liter four cylinder turbocharged diesel motor. This is a very strong motor. I love the displacement because it's a bigger displacement for cylinders, so it doesn't sound like it's straining. Although what you can hear is just how truck-like this car is under acceleration. When you're coasting at high speeds, 
it's nice and quiet but around town and anything that requires a push of the accelerator pedal you're getting a lot of sound bleeding from that motor so that's the only issue torque is delivered as low as 2000 rpm so that's nice for when you're getting off the line and the other thing to mention is that just because of how heavy this car is it's around two ton this only reduces around 62 kilowatts per ton so it on paper doesn't feel so fast but in real life it doesn't matter because this is a huge car and it gets up to speeds of say 50 to 60 kilometers an hour which you're usually going to be doing just fine and then if you need to go between 60 to 80 the torque is there to deliver a seamless transition of power to speed it's not the best in terms of rapid acceleration but once it gets going it's pretty good and it maintains speed really well and it's a nice decisive gearbox so even though this car is missing a lot of key equipment it's got the basics right so this diesel motor and this gearbox are a really good combination for not just around town driving but also when you're out on the open road and need to go just a little bit faster but you're definitely gonna have a busy ride over potholes and of course speed bumps so here are the specs we have a ground clearance of 230 millimeters our front approach angle is 24 degrees our ramp over angle is 19.5 degrees and our departure angle is 25.1 degrees I know some people out there love those specs, but how does that translate to real world performance? Well, all that stuff on road about how jumpy sometimes the MUX can be and the steering feel and everything, it all makes sense once we're out in some dirt. It just makes so much more sense when you're out here. These are capable vehicles, first of all, and then they are designed to be a family car. So if you want the family luxury car, you're probably gonna have to go shop and spend a bit more money on something like a Land Rover Defender. We're on a steep hill now, so I'm gonna test hill descent control. It's just hidden away in the gauge cluster to my right, and I'm just going to release my brake now. And we're down this steeper. Ooh, that makes a really awkward noise. Yeah, it works. It works well. It's keeping grip on the surface. It's got lots of rocks. It's loose traction. Yeah, look, that worked. That worked well. Um, it's just the noise. Jeez, that was just sound like Stuart Little underneath the brake pedal or something like that. Squealing away. It was just very uh, concerning. The only thing I would say about this car off-road is that it is just a little busy where something like the Defender was just so smooth over this sort of surfaces. I know it's a, probably an unfair comparison because price-wise, the Defender's twice as much as this, but it's almost twice as much car, so it depends what your wallet's doing. However, this is why you'd be buying this, why you'd be able to forego everything. I'm not worried about cruise control. I'm not worried about heated seats. I'm not worried about anything. I'm just worried about how this is performing off-road, and it does a damn good job of performing off-road. Heading down steeper sections of this path that we're on, it just eats it up. It's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> this is brilliant. It's really good. It's really reassuring being in this car. And finally, that leaves me with, should you buy this generation of MUX? Well, like I mentioned, it depends what sort of concessions you're willing to make for an off-roader that can perform just like this one. If you're happy to leave out all the complicated bits and pieces and you just want a basic off-roader that is relatively comfortable inside and has enough stuff in there for you to make sure you're comfortable, well then sure, go ahead and buy one of these MUXs, except I'd probably wait and try and get a better deal when the new one comes out or if you can find one that's one or two years old it might be better just buying one of these right now might not get you the best deal when the new one comes out that's for buyers who are looking at this and going no i want all those creature comforts and i'm not going to spend that sort of money without getting some of the basics that you expect in a car that's half this price and i agree with you there i think if you're looking to buy one of these and you are seriously looking to use this as an everyday car wait for the new one it's got a power tailgate it's got the safety systems it's got radar cruise control it's got everything in there that's going to fix all the problems that i noted with this mux being sold in 2021 i'm really looking 
forward to that new generation MUX and it definitely will be a contender for class leader within this segment. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, like and leave a comment if you buy one of these or you're waiting for the new one. Make sure you hit that notification bell and I'll see you in the next one.